morning, Asper Church family. I approach the throne of glory. Nothing in my hands I bring but the promise of acceptance from a good and gracious king because you deserve the greater glory overcome i lift my voice to the king in need of nothing empty handed i rejoice you deserve the greater glory overcome with joy i see by your love i am accepted you're a good and gracious king grace that you would see me as your child and as your friend safe secure with you forever i pour out my praise again you deserve the greater glory overcome i lift my voice to the king in need of nothing empty hand and i rejoice you deserve the greater glory overcome with joy by your love i am accepted your good and gracious king your good and gracious king It's time for today's message, part three of our Living Proof Sermon Series. Today's message is titled, Making the Best of Being Blessed. Love, bless, teach. Those words ought to sound familiar to the Ashford Church family because those three words make up our simple mission statement. In its expanded form, our mission statement would read, love as God loves us, bless as we have been blessed, and teach as Jesus taught so that lives are transformed, the power of forgiveness is realized, and the abundant life of Jesus Christ is experienced. Bless others as we have been blessed. Do you ever wonder why God blesses us? Listen, I'm sure we could all put our heads together and come up with a host of reasons. Uh, God blesses us because he loves us. He blesses us because God is good. God blesses us because God wants the very best for us. God blesses us because God wants us to be successful, comfortable, happy, healthy. Yes, 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 yes. But is that it? No, 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 no. God blesses us so that we can glorify him. Let's talk about it. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to serve. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come before your people to proclaim your word, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, let all those who heard it believe it and receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. 
So turn with me to Psalm 67. Psalm 67, we're going to use as the backdrop for this message today. It reads as follows. God, be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, Psalm 67 is a, a plea. It's a prayer. Uh, and it's a prayer for good success. The psalmist is petitioning God for a fruitful harvest. This was most likely a, a psalm uh, that was very popular during the Feast of Tabernacles or the fall harvest season. If you stop at the very first verse, you would think that the motive behind this plea, this prayer petition, is self-focused. But then verse 2 encourages us to change our mind about the motive, that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. The psalmist isn't just asking for blessings that benefit his ter territory. He's asking for God's blessings that benefit God's territory. In other words, God bless us so that we can glorify you so that we can share our testimony about your faithfulness to us so that everybody knows you are the great king over all the earth so that we can tell our Facebook friends, our Twitter team, our Instagram inmates, our TikTok tailgaters, how great, how loving, how marvelous, how majestic, how good, how generous a God you are. So how do we make the best of being blessed? Because we are blessed. Well, we make the best of being blessed when we rub God the right way. Rub God the right way, R-U-B. Recognize the source of our blessings, understand the mission, and then bless back with praise. Rub God the right way. God wants us to recognize the source James 1 says that every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights. And the very first word in Psalm 67 is God. Every anticipated action requested in this petition is directed toward God. God, you be gracious to us. God, you bless us. God, you cause your face to shine up on us. By the way, those, those are words from the priestly blessing you're very familiar with in the book of Numbers. If it's good, the people praying this petition are convinced that God is the source of it. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Believe it or not, we are not our own source. We're not our own source. You're not your own source. Because if you were, you'd never run out of juice. You'd never run out of power. Uh, you'd wear down, you'd wear out, you'd run out. Things happen. Yes, things happen in life. And we are taught to, you know, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and move on. But sometimes, as hard as we try to muster the physical, the emotional, uh, the, 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 the mental, the spiritual energy to go, we can't. But when our efforts fall short, God's efforts do not stop. When our sources stop working, God turns on another source. If one door closes, God will open another door. If that door closes, God will crack, crack open a window. And if you can't walk in, you can't crawl in, trust God to get you in. Trust God as the source. 
Man, I think about Psalm 121 and I get excited because it says, I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. My God, my God. If you want to make the best of being blessed, recognize the source. God the Father is the source. And when we recognize the source, it's a whole lot easier to, number two, understand the mission. So how often do you thank God for allowing you to be a blessing to others? How often do you do that? How often do you stop to just appreciate how the things that you know, the things that you sow, you show, you grow, blesses those around you. It is not always easy to recognize how blessed we really are because of the way we define blessings. Some of us will put our blessings into the stuff category. We put it in the stuff category. You know, if you don't have the stuff you think you ought to have, then you don't consider yourself blessed. And then there's some folk who, who have so much stuff, they have a lot of stuff, and they think that their stuff is what makes them blessed. But that's not the case. Now, does God want us to have great things, to enjoy life? Yes, he does. But when we ask God to bless us and we are quick to do it, God bless us and God blesses us, we need to be assured that he has so much more in mind than just giving us some stuff. God blesses us to be a blessing to others. That's the mission. In fact, that's what God told Abraham in Genesis 12 when he told him, listen, listen Abraham, I need you to leave everything you know and go to parts unknown because here's what, here's what I'm going to do. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In other words, I'm blessing you to be a blessing to others. God never intended for his blessings to be exclusive to Abraham. And your blessings are not exclusive to you. God may have singled out Abraham, but that's because the role he would play fits into God's bigger plan of salvation for the world and yours too. And that bigger plan is what the psalmist alludes to in verse number two, I'll keep going back to verse number two. For God's grace to be seen everywhere among his people and among the Gentiles. When it comes to blessings, God is a show off. God likes to show off. God wants everyone to see what a great God he is. God wants everyone to know his ways. It's all about uh, everybody, the whole world. In Deuteronomy 28, God tells the people that if they obey his commands, that he's going to bless them. He's going to bless them in the city. He'll bless them in the field. He'll bless them coming and going. He'll bless the fruit of their body. He will, he, he will bless the ground. He will bless bless the, the, their, their uh, produce. He will bless their uh, uh, cows. He, he, he'll defeat their enemies. He'll establish them in great ways. But it won't be just for them. Verse 10, then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Listen, it's true for us and I hope it is the case for every church. We don't just want to be a church in this community. We want to be a church for the community. Lord, bless us to expand you in our territory and in our community. So we make the best of being blessed when we recognize the source, when we understand the mission, and finally, when we bless back in praise. So there are at least three things about God that are revealed in Psalm 67. God wants to be known. God wants to be praised. 
and God wants to be enjoyed. Now we talked about uh, how God wants to be known. We discover that in verse number two. But verses three and four tell us that God likes to be praised and enjoyed. God likes to be blessed back. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations be glad and sing for you, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. God does not need to be blessed back, but God deserves to be blessed back. I mean, God is self-contained. Worshiping God doesn't just uh, uh, bring God joy, it also brings us joy. When God inhabits the praises of his people, it brings joy. And the Bible says God does inhabit the praises of his people. And listen, if we teach our children that please and thank you are such important words that produce results, why wouldn't we think that those two words, those actions, won't produce results with God? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Very popular doxology. God is pleased when we bless back with praise. Our relationship with him is enhanced when we bless back with praise. God gets what he deserves when we bless back with praise when we recognize him as the source, when we understand our mission, when we bless back with praise. And then let's add one more. You know, we make the best of our blessings. We make the best of being blessed when we know Jesus. When we know Jesus, if you want to make the best of being blessed, know Jesus. Now he asked me the question, well, where, where is Jesus in Psalm 67? Great question. I'm glad you asked. Because I think he's concealed right there in verse number two. But I'm going to reveal it one more time. That your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 2, Psalm 67, Jesus concealed. John 3, 16, Jesus Christ revealed. So that salvation would be possible for all the world. Jesus said it himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Do you know Jesus Christ? I want to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you haven't already done so, repent of your sin. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, died on the cross, raised from the dead to save us, to save the world. And then submit to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. I invite you to accept Jesus Christ. I invite you to find a Bible-based church like this one. Get connected and go grow and glow in the name of Jesus Christ and make the best of being blessed. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we pray for you? We would love to pray for you and your family. Send us an email to aumc at ashfordumc.org. And listen, you can include your phone number. If you do that, we'll give you a call and pray with you over the phone. Thank you as always for your continued generosity. We're off and running in 20 and 23. Your generosity will help fuel the ministry of this church. So we thank you for every uh, good and gracious uh, and kind gift that you share. You can do so online. Just go to our website at ashfordumc.org. You can click the give button in the upper right. You can text to give. That information is on your screen as well as our mailing address and the multiple other ways for you to give as well. Lord, I thank you for your word that has gone forward. Lord, I thank you that those that heard it will believe it. I pray, Lord, that we'll always be aware of you, the source. Lord, I pray that we'll always recognize and understand the mission, and that is to bless as we have been blessed. And I pray, Lord, that we will recognize that it is always best to bless back, to bless back with praise in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless the gifts and bless the gifts we've received. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, thank you so much for being with us today for our virtual service. I invite you to join us in our sanctuary at 11 o'clock each and every Sunday. We're here at 2201 South Derry Ashford Road on the west side of Houston. We uh, encourage you to bring your children. We have an outstanding children's ministry. We call it Kid Zone, K-I-D, Kingdom Intelligence Development Zone. It's for your children ages six weeks to 12 years of age. We'll teach them the word of God uh, on their level. So come on, you, come on, bring you and your whole family and come and join us. Well, I send you forth each and every Sunday with three questions. I provide the questions, you know the answers. Who's the head of this church? Jesus Christ. Who is the church? We're the church. And what are we as a church called to do? We are called to serve. God bless you all. I love you. I'll see you next time.